Hey guys, and welcome back to Mad About Skin. If you're new to our channel, welcome. Here at Mad About Skin, we're passionate about helping you to get the most out of your skincare. So if you haven't already, now's a fantastic time to click that link below, subscribe to the channel, ring that notification bell, and you won't miss out on any of our amazing future content. Now, in this video, we're gonna be doing another full brand review. In this series, we take one brand and we look at every single product that sits beneath it. We try them, we test them, we look at the ingredients, the claims, the counterclaims, and we just work out whether it's a good brand. I'll specifically be drawing out the pros and the cons so you can make your own decision on whether you want to buy from this brand. Today it's the turn of Naturium, which is a new upstart in the skincare world. It launched about three months ago, two or three months ago, and has had quite a bit of buzz about it. Then I've been planning this for about three weeks, doing the research, looking into the ingredients and things for this brand review. And then yesterday, Susan Yara, who is a huge beauty and skincare influencer here on YouTube, if you haven't checked her out, I will link her channel below because she's definitely worth a watch. She's really got what got me into having the confidence to set up this skincare channel. I adore her. She announced yesterday that it's actually her brand. Now, I don't know, and I'm not gonna comment because I'm not 100% sure whether that was widely known beforehand. I had no idea. So I was going at this blind, which I kind of is a good thing because I love Susan Yara and I really don't want my opinion of her to cloud my judgment on her brand. But she announced yesterday in a YouTube video that this was in fact her brand and she's super proud of it. She talked a little bit about the products. Um, and so I think that really just set like the buzz that was already there into like the stratosphere. That video has got like 200,000 views and all the beauty editors and bloggers are talking about it. So this brand is sensational when it comes to their social media hype. However, I wanna look behind the hype and work out whether it's a brand you actually need. Now, I haven't been able to get my hands on any of the products because this is not shipped internationally. I'm here in the UK and this is only shipped within the US. Well, at the time of filming this video, it was only shipped within the US. I'm assuming like all upstand, uh, upstart companies, they're going to expand, they're going to go global, but these things take time and I'm not knocking them points off for not being international from day one because it is a huge mammoth operation to run an international shipping operation from day one. So there's no shade on that. I understand why they want to start in their home territory and expand from there. However, I've had a look at the full skincare range. I'm going to talk you through each of the products on whether I think they're good, a you need value for money or whether you need them in your skincare routine. Obviously, I do love Susan Yara. However, all of these opinions which I formulated when I was doing my research was before I knew she had anything to do with the brand. So it's all unbiased and sending out a lot of love to Susan if she does watch this video, but these are all just my views and what I think. So um, Naturium, it launched, like I said, three months ago and is really based around clean beauty. But not that clean beauty that, clean beauty I have a huge issue with because people tend to just stick that label on products, charge a little extra coin to, you know, it's a bit of a marketing gimmick. There's no international standard of what is clean. And so I kind of don't like it. However, Naturium back up what clean is to them in all of their marketing on their website and in all of the bumps that they put out to the consumer. So I'm absolutely fine with that. But they go for clean, effective and biocompatible formulas. The biocompatible I thought was just a bit of marketing gimmick, but I did look into this on their website. It just explains that basically they want it to work well with your skin. So presenting active ingredients, but in an encapsulated way that deals with some of the irritation and sensitivity you might get from it, some of the upset that some of these active ingredients can do to your skin, and just make sure that it's as compatible as possible with your own skin, which I think is absolutely fantastic and something a little bit different that we don't always see from brands. Oh, straight off the bat, they are cruelty free, they are vegan, they're fragrance free, and they're pH balanced, which is like a ding, ding, ding for me. I think that's a fantastic start for this brand. pH balanced, we don't mean balanced to a neutral, which is seven on the pH scale. We mean balanced to a five, which is your skin's natural pH. You've heard me whittle on about the acid mantle, so I won't go into too much detail about that, but our skin should be acidic. It prevents the um, formulation of bad bacteria, which is like an alkaline environment, so definitely our skin should remain acidic. So that is what they mean by pH balanced in all of these, and I did check on the website, when they say pH balance, they mean to the skin's natural pH of about five, five and a half, not to seven, which is neutral. So I love that. I love that it's vegan. I'm not vegan personally, but I think it's fantastic that, you know, people, an increasing number of people are looking to a plant-based lifestyle. And I love it when products are as inclusive as possible. By being vegan, it means everybody can enjoy it. So that's absolutely fantastic and fragrance-free, let's be honest. 
I like a bit of fragrance in my skincare, but I think if you are talking about purely just active ingredients, which I'm not surprised because Susan is all about the actives, I don't think you need fragrance. So I'm kind of glad that they've taken fragrance out of here because it means this is, again, accessible to people with sensitive skin, which is absolutely fantastic. No mention of colorant free, and I have looked, and there is a little bit in some of the products, so I'm not sure, I would, make of that what you will. I think um, colorant can make a product look aesthetically pleasing. Um, some people do like it, some people don't like it. I'll leave that up to you, but um, a fantastic, fantastic start being cruelty-free, which oh, I love. You know, I love it. It's 2020. We don't need to be testing on animals. We don't need to be promoting cruelty. I love that. So before we get into individual products, they do have one claim on their website, which I will take a little bit of an issue with, which is that all their products are non-toxic. I don't like the term non-toxic because it's totally misleading. All ingredients are toxic in the right concentration. So when people say that, you know, is something toxic, is something non-toxic, it depends on the concentrations, it depends on the um, formulations, the strength, these things. So let's not pretend that they say they use non-toxic ingredients. Vitamin C can be toxic in a huge quantity. So all ingredients have a toxicity level. And so when people say non-toxic, I kind of, I just think it's a bit of a marketing gimmick and I'm not particularly, I'm not a big fan of that. Safe to use on the skin is something which I would prefer to be used in terms of terminology, but really it's just splitting hairs. I thought I'd just throw that out in case anyone has a query and thinks, oh, if this is non-toxic, does that mean all my rest of my skincare is toxic? No, this is a bit of clever marketing. Um, that's the one thing I would probably take issue with. So let's start at the beginning of our skincare routine and that is the cleanser. They have a cleanser with the Mixed Greens Nutrient Rich Cleanser. This is formulated with aloe and green tea. I love aloe as an ingredient. It's calming, it's soothing, it's hydrating, it's a fantastic. And all of these products are packed full of botanicals, which is great. If you love botanicals, this will be a great skincare line for you. I love aloe. I think it's fantastic. I love um, green tea. I think it's calming. It's got antioxidants in there. It's also got vitamin C in this. I just think this is a bit unnecessary. You know, cleansers, we always come across this. Cleansers you put on your face, you massage in, you wash off. I really don't think active ingredients belong in cleansers. I think you run the risk of doubling up because you then use an active ingredient later in your skincare routine or you don't use an active ingredient later because you think you've used it in your cleanser. You're not getting the benefit from it. You're washing it down the sink. So I don't like that. However, from the ingredients in this, it's definitely what you class as clean in terms of the parabens and things like that not being present in the product. Um, green tea is fantastic, antioxidant, and I love the addition of aloe. It it's $16 in the US. So when it comes over to the UK, which hopefully soon, we'll probably place it around the 10 to 12 pound mark. It's a little bit more than I would usually play for a cleanser. I usually say stick to under 10 pounds, $10 for your cleanser, but it's got some nice ingredients in and I think overall it's kind of worth it. I'm not going to go on too much. It's a cleanser. At the end of the day, how exciting can a cleanser be? Not that much. And this is a nice cleanser. The packaging, by the way, is to die for. Obviously, I'll be leaving images of all of this. The packaging is gorgeous, it's streamlined, it's effective. All of these products have the concentrations on the packaging and on the ingredients, which I love. And I kind of, I'm glad that Susan's living to what she preaches. She always says you need to know the concentrations. Companies should be transparent about concentrations. And all of these have the formulations and the concentrations on, which means as a consumer, you can make the right decision for you in terms of what strength you want to go for. I love that. Now moving on to, I guess, retinols. Now, Susan has been a huge expert. She was the one that really got me interested in retinols. I'd heard of them before, but I kind of thought it didn't apply to me. And Susan is like the biggest, biggest supporter of retinol usage in the world, or certainly on YouTube. And so, of course, she's got two retinols. She's got both at two and a half percent. Don't get too hung up, hung up on the percentages because different retinol types, different vitamin A derivatives have different strengths. And so the percentages are kind of meaningless when you're talking about um, retinols, unless you know all of the science behind it. But this is a mid-strength retinol. It comes in a cream and it comes in a serum. I like the fact you've got two choices. I would go for the serum because I'm oily. If you're slightly drier, you should go for the cream because it'll just give you that little bit more hydration. I love this. Um, it's two and a half percent retinol. It's twenty. It's twenty dollars. So it'll probably in the UK come out at about fifteen pounds, which is really good for a retinol. Retinols tend to be one of the more expensive parts of your skincare routine. So the price point, absolutely love that. No issue with that. It's got hyaluronic acid in and vitamin E. Now, both hyaluronic acid and vitamin E are fantastic um, moisturizers and humectants. I'm assuming the vitamin E, you use your retinol on an evening, so vitamin E is also an antioxidant. Because you're not gonna be exposed to sunlight and pollution things during the nighttime when you're sleeping, I'm assuming it's in here as a hydrator rather than an antioxidant. Both fine to have in there. I do think some people suffer with um, 
dryness when it comes to retinol. This is mid-strength, so it should be too bad. I did a whole video on sort of the retinol nasties and how to survive them. I'll link that up there if you are thinking of dipping your toes into retinol. and um, Watch that video first. I really like this product. I like the idea that it's got some hydration in there. It's got a mid-strength retinol. It's very clear about the strength and how it works. It's got really clear instructions on there, which I love. Um, my only issue, if I was to pick one, is I think the vitamin E might be a little bit too occlusive for me as someone with oily skin. I like retinol because it helps to calm the oil down. But I think vitamin E, I just, I struggle with it a little bit. But without having tried it, I don't want to say that for a fact, but I do think vitamin E maybe is a little unnecessary, specific, especially because you've got the hyaluronic acid in there already but that's just my personal thoughts on that and you know if you add normal to dry vitamin E will be a gorgeous addition for you vitamin C this is your other active which I think is it I always say vitamin C and retinols are kind of your must-have actives and they've got a vitamin C serum at 22% ascorbic acid a lot of people say wow that's quite a that is a strong that is a very strong vitamin C and a lot of people say I can't touch that I, I can't do that because I've got sensitive skin well, the website says that it's encapsulated and that means that the liver mechanism sort of buffers some of the vitamin C side effects, which means you shouldn't get too much um, sensitivity, tingling and stinging from using this product without actually applying it to my face. I can't guarantee that, but I do like the technology that they've employed with this, which means that you should be able to get a higher strength vitamin C, more benefits from it without some of the side effects and the tingling and just the nasties that come with vitamin C. I've, if most actives have side effects, vitamin C is one of them, but I think this is nicely formulated and I enjoy that. It's also got hyaluronic acid, vitamin E, and it's got a mixture of different vitamin C's in there. This is quite a clever formulation. For the price point coming in at um, $22, I think it's a really good price point for a multiple different types of vitamin C. You've got the hyaluronic acid, you've got the vitamin E in there. I love all of that. I'll come on to some, I know I see quite in favor of all these products. I'm gonna come on to some negatives because again, you're seeing, seeing that hyaluronic acid and um, that vitamin E rear its head again in this product. So I think it might be overused, which I'll come on to later in the video. But the strength is fantastic. I like the encapsulated technology. I think it's brilliant. The price point is to die for. And this is a really good vitamin C. If you look when this launched, before anyone knew it was Susan Diara, when it launched, the, all the buzz seemed to be about this serum. Everyone was saying how gorgeous it was to use. The texture was fantastic. It didn't sting, it didn't irritate, and people with sensitive skin could use it. So from that perspective, this is a fantastic product. And I think probably, the standout product, one of the two standout products for me from this whole line and the ones that I will be getting my hands on first when it hits in the UK. Now, niacinamide, no skincare routine, particularly for someone with oily skin like me, would be complete without a niacinamide. And this is a niacinamide serum. It's a 12% niacinamide with 2% zinc added in there. It's also got hyaluronic acid and vitamin C. Again, seeing that theme, uh, vitamin E even, sorry, vitamin E. So it's kind of similar to the other serums, but in niacinamide. Now, I did a whole video on niacinamide, which I'll link up there. I don't like niacinamide in concentrations over 10%. I think that's when you can start seeing some of the irritation, the sensitivity, some of the purging. I usually go for 5% niacinamide. The addition of zinc is lovely because that does help to um, balance out the oil production in the skin. So it's fantastic for anyone with oily skin like me. I love that. Very similar to like the ordinary, they do a 10% with 2% zinc. So a similar kind of formulation. I usually say start with a 5% niacinamide. If you need to, if you're super oily like me, you can go up to a 10%. But anything above 10%, I just don't think is necessary. So I don't like the fact they've pushed this to 12. And I don't understand why they've pushed it to 12. Whether it's to differentiate between this and the 10% ordinary, possibly. For me, I just find that a little bit too strong. And I wouldn't personally be recommending that people use this, particularly if you have sensitive skin. I think it could just be a little bit too much. Lovely price point. And again, you've got the hyaluronic acid and vitamin E. Gonna make sure that you aren't too dry and it doesn't dry out your skin too much. But again, it's just repeating itself in all of these products, which I'll come on to in a bit. But not a bad product, but one of the ones that I'm gonna give a firm pass to, only because I think the concentration is too high. Again, the packaging's gorgeous, the price point's fantastic. I just don't think you need 12% niacinamide in your life. I am gonna watch the Susan Yarra video, the launch video she did of this yesterday. I haven't because I don't want it to cloud my opinion on this, but I am gonna watch it to see what her rationale for including a 12% in there is. Might change my mind, but just on the face of it, I don't think you need that 12% strength in this product. Now we're going on to something quite exciting. This is another one that I'm really excited about. This is the Quadruple Hyaluronic Acid Serum. 5% hyaluronic acid and it's a $16 price tag. Again, about £12 when it comes to the UK, hopefully. This is 
totally different. It has four different molecular weights of hyaluronic acid in it. Often when you buy hyaluronic acid, you're buying it off the counter, you get hyaluronic acid. Maybe get a little different concentration, you might get a different formulation, but ultimately you're getting hyaluronic acid. I raved, I did a whole video on Neod, which is a brand from Desium, I'll link that up there for you. Check that out because their standout product was their uh, multi-molecular hyaluronic complex, that's a lot of words. Basically that has 15 different um, hyaluronic compounds in there. So it was just a moisture overload and I loved it. It's now my go-to hyaluronic acid. This doesn't have 15, it has four, but for the price difference, because the Neod is £40, this will come in at about £12, so you know, you're paying a quarter of the price and you're still getting more than just one hyaluronic acid compound. You get different molecular weights, means they'll work differently and it just give you more hydration. I love this as a product. I think it's really great that it's not, they've not gone down the polyglutamic acid route, which a lot of people do. They've stuck with hyaluronic acid, which is the original, and in my view, the best humectant, and they've just mixed it up, added four different molecular weights to give an extra level of hydration. I can't wait to try this because I reckon it'd be a really good, almost dupe for the Neod Multimolecular Hyaluronic Complex. If you're in the States, I recommend you try this and let me know what you think of it because the reviews online have been so good. I really, I'm really quite excited about this product. I think it could be really good. Now, I've cut, that's what I class as their normal series. They've got a couple of moisturizers and I'm going to come on to some really interesting products they've got. They've got two moisturizers, which I'm not going to dwell too much on because I just find moisturizers boring. I, I think they just lock in all the skincare and that's it. I don't really think you need to spend too much time talking about moisturizers, but they've got a niacinamide gel cream, 5%. This is quite good, it's 5% niacinamide, so if you don't want to go for the 12%, which you shouldn't, you can go for a 5%, which in a cream, which is a gorgeous hydrating base for a cream to lock in all your um, skincare. I love that, that's $20. Quite expensive for a moisturiser, but it's in gorgeous packaging, and it is hydrating, the ingredients are well formulated, and it doesn't have some of the nasties in there, so all in all, quite nice. Kind of looks a bit like Herbivore, if you remember the Herbivore packaging, or the Water Cream by Peter Thomas Roth. Just a gorgeous packaging, gorgeous product. They also do the Marine Hyaluronic Water Cream. Again, similar to the Marine Hyaluronics by The Ordinary, but in a cream form. It'd be super moisturising and great to top off your routine, $20. I kind of don't really have anything to say about them. They'll work, they'll definitely hydrate. They shouldn't be, based on the ingredients, too heavy. Um, and the price point is fair, so that's kind of, that's my thoughts on that. If you want a moisturiser, I don't think you need to spend more than $4. Just get the um, natural moisturising factors by the ordinary and be done with it. But if you do want to go for something a little bit lighter, these could certainly work for you. Now, I am really interested and I literally cannot wait. Susan, if you're watching, get this in the UK now because I cannot wait to try it. This is the Vitamin C Super Serum Plus. This has Vitamin C, Retinol, Hyaluronic Acid, Niacinamide and Salicylic Acid all in one. Now, that is a buffet for the gods. That is, I mean, like, that is like a skincare routine in one product. And that is what everyone is singing its praises and saying it does. If you just want cleanse, serum and go, this is the product for you. Like, honestly, it has everything you could want in it. My only, my only criticism of this is because it's got salicylic acid in it and because it's got niacinamide in it and because it's got vitamin C and retinol, obviously you use it in the evenings for your evening skincare. You couldn't use it both morning and night because it'd just be doubling up on the retinol, which I wouldn't recommend. So it's an evening serum. My only thing is if you are dry skinned, you couldn't, you shouldn't use this. The salicylic acid, the niacinamide, the retinol, it's all just going to be too much for your dry skin and sensitive skin. It does say, because again, that is capsulated technology, it's fine for sensitive skin. I would just give it a miss. I, I, I won't risk it if I had sensitive skin. However, if you are normal combination or oily, this could be your nighttime skincare routine in one. Get yourself a cleanser. Cleanse, put this on, go to bed, done. Literally a 30 second skincare routine. This could be game changing as a product. I love, love, love the sound of this. I can't wait to try it. Someone like me that is super oily will really benefit from the retinol, the vitamin C, the salicylic acid, it'll just be gorgeous. And if I can cut my nighttime skincare routine down from like 10 minutes to 30 seconds, I'm all in. Susan, you've done me proud. I love the sound of this product. I'm gonna test it. Again, I probably wouldn't use it if I was sensitive, but you know, they say you can with the encapsulated technology, but I think you might have to patch test quite heavily first before you dip your toes into this. But I loved this product. So overall, what are my thoughts? Well, they're getting points from cruelty-free, fragrance-free, vegan, and beautifully formulated. The technology with the encapsulation is really interesting, and I think that it can benefit a lot of people that normally feel a little bit too sensitive to go for some of the stronger ingredients. Every one of these products does something. There's no like filler, what I call like, you know, oh, we'll put up a nice 
you know, a nice scented fragrance mist and get a few extra coin, but it doesn't do anything. There's none of that. All of these products will do something. The packaging is divine. The price point is fantastic for the effort that's gone into formulating these. I'm disappointed they don't ship internationally, but I understand that. So hopefully, fingers crossed they will in the future and I can get my hands on some of these. Overall, I would give this line, I'm going to give this line an eight and a half out of 10. I'm knocking a point and a half off for just the repetition of ingredients, which I don't think you need. This I'll explain because I'm going to ramble. So I'll explain, try and explain. Hyaluronic acid and vitamin E are fantastic, but they're not benign ingredients. They're not things that you can just keep using and using and using and there's no side effects if you keep overusing them. I think because all of these products pretty much contain vitamin E and hyaluronic acid, I think you could risk overdoing both of those. For someone like me, vitamin E using it too often can become a little bit occlusive and can block the pores. Even if someone says it's a non-comediogenic formulation, it can still clog the pores and it's just something I want to avoid. Hyaluronic acid, again, if you use it too often, it can still lead to sensitivity and issues with the product. So I just wish they didn't have it in every product because... I like to be able to piece together a skincare routine and not have to check every single ingredient to make sure I'm not doubling up. I think you run the risk with this product. If you use the cleanser, which has vitamin C, and then you use the vitamin C serum, which has vitamin C, and also has hyaluronic acid in, then you use the retinol, which also has hyaluronic acid in. See what I mean? You just end up repeating quite a few of these ingredients, which I think is fine if you understand what you're doing and you look through but if you're just going to buy this whole routine and slap it on i don't think it's all of the products are compatible with each other now to be fair they never claim that they are i just think it could be a little bit difficult for the first time skincare user but i'm really just picking at hairs here because it's a fantastic skincare line and i think people because it's so transparent the concentrations the ingredients and everything is so transparent it just lets you make the decision it empowers the consumer to make a decision that's right for them and ultimately that's what we're all here for, and Susan has done us proud. All these opinions were before I knew Susan was behind all this. I love her, so I love the brand even more, and I will buy every single item, bar the moisturisers, when it's launched in the UK. I think can't wait to get my hands on it and try it. Have you guys, have anyone tried any of these products? Leave me a comment below. If you're in the US, promise me you'll go and buy them and try them just to let me know because I can't wait till it's launched in the UK. Hopefully you enjoyed this review. Um, I'd love to know what your thoughts are, if there's any other brands you want us to review in the future. If you could give this video a big thumbs up, it really helps our channel. And wherever you're in the world you are, stay safe, stay well, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.